Hey everyone, today is day two of the 21 days to finding hope in uncertain times. And um, I was speaking to someone last night and they made this request, which I thought would be really good to do right out of the gate. Um, so it's really like, it's not okay for me to be happy right now. It's not okay for me to have fun. Any variation of that with everything that's going on in the world. Sorry, I'm going to let crack that open. You get to see my face really big in there. Um, with everything that's going on in the world and the deaths and all that, um, you could feel that way. Like, it's not okay for me. Hey, Tina. It's, it's not okay for me to have fun. It's not okay for me... Um, to be joyful and I, I saw this post that I posted on my Facebook page um, I'm probably gonna I'm not gonna say it verbatim I don't think um, anyone know if we can take showers yet or should we still just keep washing our hands and you know I, I think it, I, when I read it I thought it was hilarious and you might and 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 I like to post stuff like that personally because I think it lightens the load that a lot of people are feeling but think about that if there's any part of you, and this is, um, if you think about, I think it was uh, Gay Hendricks, it, the book he has, The Big Leap, An Upper Limit is what he calls something. So this to me is kind of um, along those lines. It might not necessarily be exactly an upper limit, but if you think about if, if there's death in the world, and I know people you know that have died from it or this, and you, you don't can't allow yourself hope about it, um, or you can't allow yourself to feel go out and have fun and feel happy when I say go out I mean my going out is taking my dog for a hike, but just even having fun online or whatever you're doing so think about that and and we'll talk about this so uh, just um I, I want to I think this is, is actually this is kind of the funny story so when my mother passed away in 2006 it was intense it was an intense the way she died and everything that we were left with was intense. And my sisters and I had to get her uh, place cleared out within that day. And it, it, you know, it was just, it was intense. I, I can't say that enough. And, um, you know, we were all reeling with emotion and just letting it just be what it is. And, and at times we would sort of, we, we might, um, have a little dissension which would be completely understandable we always sort of like came back together and just just did that that's the one thing i you know i i so notice about my sisters and i is despite any differences we might have when when shit hits the fan we come together in a really big way and and just t take care of things and i i really um l love that um about the dynamics between us but what happened is we were at the um, we were at the mortuary, and I was looking over the bill, and I literally saw on the bill a refrigeration charge. I'd never seen anything like that. It was my first time being, you know, on the receiving end of this and dealing with all of this. So I'm reading this to my sisters. I said, "God, there's a refrigeration charge on here." And my one sister goes, "Yeah." Mom's just downstairs chilling. I about died laughing. I, I could not. And it was such a perfect moment. Like we all burst out laughing. It was such a, like it's the comic relief. It was the moment of relief that we all needed from intensity. If anybody saw the movie Steel Magnolias and the scene where Julia Roberts has passed and Sally Fields is just, you know, she's so upset about that she's you know expressing she's lost a child and that it, i mean and in the theater you're in such an intensity of what's going on and then all of a sudden olympia dukakis's character you know sally fields is going i just want to hit something i just want to hit something and olympia dukakis goes here hit wheezy and that was shirley mclean's character and everyone in the audience burst out and there's a lot to be said for that in those moments of intensity to find the comic relief. Um, because what I think is we live in a culture that we're all programmed to believe like if somebody else is struggling, it's not okay for me to feel good. This is where, this is, this is where joy 
or happiness becomes what I call a forbidden emotion. We don't allow ourselves to feel it because others are suffering. And you cannot be sad enough, um, upset enough to make that okay for someone else. So I just wanted to start with that, um, that little monologue, I guess it is. Um, and then we're, we're going to tap. So just start on the karate chop. Even though right now, it's not okay for me to feel happy. It's not okay for me to find things funny. There's a serious pandemic going on. People are dying. So it's definitely inappropriate for me to find anything funny. I choose to acknowledge I feel this way now. Even though it's not okay for me to find joy and happiness right now, it's not okay to make fun of any of this. That is so inappropriate. People are dying. It's serious business. And I need to be serious about it. I choose to acknowledge these feelings now. Even though that's not okay, It's not okay to find humor in any of this. It's not okay. That is so inappropriate. What if I could see this differently now? It's not okay. It's not okay to find humor in this. It's not okay to feel good. This is a serious pandemic that's going on. It would be way too inappropriate to find humor in any of this. But here's the thing, I can't get serious enough to make people well. I can't get sad and devastated enough to make any of this okay. I can't just be sad enough to make any of this better for anyone. But what if a way I can contribute is to feel good? even if it's just little moments, to allow myself those moments, moments of humor, moments of joy, moments of happiness, even with everything that's going on. What if 
it really is okay. Maybe even advisable to give myself relief using humor, joy, happiness, any good feeling emotion. What if right now that's actually the best way that I can contribute goodness with everything that's going on? Not deny how I feel about it. Not be, oh, I'm just going to think happy thoughts. Honor all of my feelings about this. But notice if I feel some guilt or shame around finding moments of pleasure. What if I could look at that and what if it could be possible that allowing myself more of those moments is really good for me, good for my immune system. good for those who I am in contact with and good for humanity. Because has me being down and out ever made it better for anyone? So I can acknowledge all of my emotions about this. Not deny any of them. Not deny my joy. Not deny my hopeful thoughts. And what if by elevating myself that way I do my part for everyone and take a breath. It's really interesting. I, I think through my life, um, anytime I've lost a loved one or anytime I've gone through really difficult, challenging times, and I've had a lot of them, I think the thing that has carried me through is those moments when I'm like, oh my God, like you can find the humor in something. Um, just all, all those moments. I mean, I just think of so many different times where things were so intense at different times in my life and yet the thing that really helped me through or helped pull me like from circling the drain was the humor was was the humor. Oh, interesting, Kirsty, that you should pop on at this time. So Kirsty's a comedian. And what I see is, and I'm putting you on the spot here, Kirsty, but I think you'll be okay with this. Uh, Kirsty's in, um, in um, the UK and she does, not right now, but she does Comedy Market. She has a podcast um, with a friend of hers and I've listened to it. It is freaking hilarious. And just to, um, I, or Kirstie and I have always talked about like what I, what I think the gift that she gives the world is humor. 
she helps people laugh and that's so needed that's so needed at this time and um so that's to me where humor joy all that becomes a forbidden emotion when we're like oh my god like people are dying and i i, I can't find humor in this and yet it's good for your immune system. It's good for you. It's good for those around you. I truly believe, you know, the energy that you put out there has that ripple effect and and it it helps. It brings levity to things. Um, you know, that serious situation. So, I want to read what you said, Tina. Awesome topic. I feel a balance between the situation seriously to be safe and having joy and laughter to cope is key. That is so true and I think that speaks to the word resilience. Um, I think it was I think it was Carl Jung that said, "The people that survive are the ones that are resilient. Anything that have resilience." And I think adding finding humor, even not like not being cavalier about anything, not be like, "Ah, oh, yeah, whatever." But the I oh my God, this was so me as a child growing up in such an intense Catholic thing is like. I, I just felt like, oh my God, I had to be so serious about things, even when I could find humor and stuff. And I, I think that's a disservice, really, to just, you know, make humor or any of that a forbidden emotion during this time. Because um, really, if nothing else, it's really good for your immune system to laugh. Um, I remember the woman that cured breast cancer by watching comedy after comedy after comedy after comedy. And um, I think. I can't remember which show movie I saw that in. But anyway, so um, Tina, happy you're here. Kirsty, Pam, that's who I can see that's here. Uh, this was somebody asked me about this yesterday. I'm like, oh my God, that's a great topic. So I wish you all well. I wish you humor, joy, and pleasure amidst, amidst everything that's going on, that you can find those moments and milk them and really give those to you. Because the other thing that I would say about that is, when we lift ourselves up and help lift others up, even in the face of all of this, we have no idea what possibilities that we open ourselves up to by doing that. Because as we, if you just as you soothe your nervous system and calm down, you have access to that creative part of the brain, the slower part of the brain. You have no idea what solutions about things might come to you. Um, when you're not bogged down in all the heaviness and the darkness and you find the lightness of being and the humor and I, Martin Luther King, I'm probably going to mis misquote this, darkness cannot um, remove darkness, only light can do that. That quote, I'll have to find it and post it, but um, a true prophet and spoken quite well. Um, I used to be an oncology and hospice nurse. Our sense of humor is what's got us through. Oh my gosh, I, I can only imagine. I think that's so true. Thanks for sharing that, Pam. All right, everyone. Um, uh, many blessings to you all and um, see you tomorrow for day three. Bye for now.